most common question asked by interviewer for system administrator profile hey all i am ajit rawat your online instructor and you are watching teach me cloud youtube channel as we know that system administrator is one of important and common job profile for each and every it industry if you really want to be the part of it industry you can start your journey as a system administrator what are the things that required to become a system administrator you must need to know about different technologies like as a desktop troubleshooting you should know about the solution how we can resolve the issues related to desktop laptop or sometimes server machines as well you should know about the networking basic of networking like as a ip address protocol of networking inbound outbound logical port and how to transfer data from one computer to another computer how to handle our network printer configure map network drive so these all topics that you need to know next another technology required like as a wintel in the case of wintel you must need to know about the server installation in the server we are able to find multiple roles and features like active directory domain services dscp dns ias wds so you must need to know about the features which are available in active directory like as a objects container group policy how we can replicate the domain controller from root domain controller to additional domain controller how to set up child domain controller and uh, rodc as well apart from the windows server and active directory services you also need to know about mailing management mailing management you know that number of mailing service providers are available in the market like google workspace you should know about how google workspace can perform the task and microsoft 365 portal how we can purchase a free trial license how to set up different types of licenses that we have how to create user synchronize users from on premises ad to microsoft interconnect so lots of topic that you need to know the agenda of this particular video in this video i'm going to guide you about the most common question basically asked by interviewer for system administrator job profile so let me move ourselves to the screen that i can show you the all important questions list and also will help you how you can reply to your interviewer so i'm moving myself to the screen but before that if you are new on my youtube channel if you are watching my video first time please do subscribe because teach me cloud is a single technical training based youtube channel that give you 100% live practical based video without the skip any step i hope everyone able to see my screen so let's talk about the system administrator the first and really important part prerequisite right you should know about the prerequisites that will help you to prepare yourself for the system administrator profile number 1 desktop troubleshooting right you should know about how to troubleshoot basic problems related to desktop number 2 windows server and active directory yes you also need to know about the work of windows server operating system with adds services how we can set up user configure our uh, group organizational unit computers gpo and domain replication number third another important technology which is microsoft 365 that will help you to handle our mailing services I wanted to add one more point in desktop troubleshooting like basic of networking. So these three technologies will definitely help you to crack the interview related to the system administrator. And let's talk about the important question that mostly asked by uh, uh interviewers. So let me start with desktop troubleshooting. In case of desktop troubleshooting, the common and very important question question 1 what is raid system right you should know about the work of raid system and also define the types of raid this is common question because the system administrator uh, responsible to set up a hard drive set up a hard drive to store any data like you are responsible to take care of the storage part so you should know about the concept of raid system so let me help you to understand about the concept of raid system as per the name suggest redundant array of independent disk this is raid and the as per the name suggest the work of raid system whenever we combine the hard drive one hard disk to another hard drive or uh, more than one hard drive connect together so which is a part of raid that will help us to increase the space and they, that will also help us to protect our data number of raid systems are available since single word you can say that if anyone ask you question related what is raid 
So RAID is a redundant array of independent disk, which is responsible to protect our data. We can use our RAID system for to set up a SAN storage or NAS storage. For both the types of storage, need to establish our RAID system. Apart from this, you should know about the types of RAID, so which is categorized in multiple part, like as a RAID one, zero. Second one is RAID one, RAID five, RAID six and the last one is RAID 10. These all are the common RAID system that you need to know and I'm going to guide you about the work of these RAID system. Let's start with the RAID 0. So basically RAID 0 is applicable to just add the space from one hard drive to another hard drive categorized in two different parts. One is spanned volume, yes, one is spanned volume and second one is striped volume. The meaning of spanned volume, let's Take an example, we have a two different hard drives with different capacity like 200 GB plus 200 GB and it will combine the space and will give us a 400 gig final space. Means you can store data up to 400 GB. No data security, definitely it will not provide any kind of data security or high availability. It will help you to just combine the space from one hard drive to another hard drive. Second important part, for example, we have a two different hard drive with different capacity like 300 GB and 200 GB. And this time I'm going to set up our striped volume. The final disk will be 400 GB because in case of striped volume, it will always select the minimum hard disk space. You will get final hard disk space up to 400 GB, but 2x speed of data transmission. You are going to write data, you are going to read the data from 400 gig of hard drive, definitely it will provide you high data transaction speed. But again, no data security in case of spanned volume. Another important part, RAID 1. So RAID 1 is basically also considered as a uh, mirror volume, right? So as per the name suggests, the meaning of mirror volume, two different hard disk available, maybe with same capacity. 500 GB and another hard disk with same capacity, 500 GB. Final disk space will be 500 gig because it will set up a kind of mirror volume. Means data security. Definitely, if you want to protect your data, you are you need to proceed with mirror volume or RAID 1. The same data, for example, you are going to upload data from your base machine. You uploaded one data in disk 1. It will create the same copy of data and put into the another hard drive. Means if any problem occur with the first hard drive, you can revert back your data from second. If second hard is damaged, you can re revert back or access your data from disk one. That is the reason RAID 1 can give you same hard disk space, no matter you connected a two different hard drive. Let's talk about RAID 5 because this is most important and common RAID system mostly used by each and every organization to establish SAN storage. RAID 5 required minimum three hard drive, disk one, disk two, and disk three. I'm going to use same disk space, 200 GB plus 200 GB and again 200 GB, right? And what will be the final disk space? The final disk space will be 400 GB. How we can calculate because sometimes they are going to ask you question how we can calculate the value in case of RAID 5. Minimum disk space multiply by number of disk and minus one disk. So minimum hard disk space 200 GB multiply by three, it becomes 600 minus one hard disk means 200. The final disk space will be 400 GB. All good and which is also considered as a single parity. It means that if any hard is damaged from the list, you are able to restore your data from remaining two different hard drives. That is the reason it is considered as a single parity. Apart from RAID 5, RAID 6 can also perform same task, but which is considered as a dual parity. This RAID 6 considered as a dual parity means required minimum four different hard disks required to establish it. Disk 1, disk 2, disk 3, disk 4 may be with same capacity.
and the final hard disk space that you will get to store your personal data up to 400 GB. All good. I hope everyone able to understand. But it will provide you dual parity means if any two different hard disk damage from the list, you are able to restore the data or you are able to access your data from remaining two hard drive. This is the actual work of RAID 6. The last RAID system, you can say that RAID 10. Important, you must need to know about the use cases of RAID 10. Again, minimum four hard disk required, disk 1, disk 2, disk 3, disk 4. The capacity of each and every hard disk may be 200 GB, right? All the hard disks are available with same capacity. We are going to combine the space by using the striped volume. The final disk space will be 400 GB. Same with second, 200 plus 200, 400 GB. And I'm going to use stripe volume to combine the space. It will increase the speed of data transaction, 2x speed. And once you're ready with these two hard disks, please set up RAID 1, right? So the meaning of RAID 1 also considered as a mirror volume. Means the data that you are going to upload on this machine, it will reflect to the second machine. 1 and RAID 0. The combination of RAID 1 and 0 considered as a RAID 10. This is all about the RAID system. Maybe they are going to ask two questions from our RAID system. So I hope you good with the all points that we discussed. And now let's talk about question number next. Question two. What is domain replication, right? What is domain replication? If any interviewer will ask you questions related to domain application and FSMO role, domain replication is basically categorized in two different parts. One is intra-site and second one is inter-site. We have a two different met method to establish our uh, replication. One is inter-site and intra-site. Inter-site means within the premises, you are going to establish your additional domain controller and combine to each other, considered as intra-site. And whenever we establish our additional domain controller in different geographical location, that consider as a inter-site domain replication. About FSOMO role, so basically FSOMO role categorized in two different part. The first one is forest wide and second domain wide total number of roles are available five two for forest wide and three applicable for domain wide first one is schema master second domain naming master number third which is a part of our domain naming master, oh, sorry, domain wide PDC emulator. Number fourth, RID pool manager. And number fifth, infrastructure master. Each and every roles are responsible to perform their own task, but you should know about forest wide and domain wide all good everyone i hope you are, uh, are able to understand about the all points that we are discussing one important topic one another important question that i'm going to cover question number next related to office 365 about tell me about dl and shared mailbox are Maybe they, they, they are going to ask you a question related to what is difference between shared mailbox and distribution list. So very simple steps required. Let's start with DL, distribution list. Distribution list can help us to broadcast the message. And whenever we create our distribution list, for example, you are going to create one DL with name of demo DL. This is your distribution list name. 
and in DL you are going to add few users, right? ABC is our user, test is our user, XYZ is our user, and Clark is also our user. We added four users in same distribution list, and you are going to send email, test, mail to DL, and the all users that you added will get the same content on their own mailbox. This is the actual concept of DL. If you want to broadcast the message to all of the employee, then you always proceed with the distribution list. And the shared mailbox is totally different as per the name suggests. Shared mailbox is a type of common mailbox which is applicable for multiple users like you are going to add one user with name of gcp one more user you add, added with name of alibaba and aws three different users that you added in same uh, shared mailbox so this is common mailbox you can say that means every user that you added in shared mailbox will get the access of shared mailbox means the capacity of shared mailbox is applicable for all the users that you added so huge gap between shared mailbox and our distribution list. I hope everyone okay and understand about the concept of uh, uh, our uh, top three because you know that need to discuss about the all answers. So now I'm going to complete the three course, three important question. Next we'll give you the another three and as it is we'll provide you total 32 40 questions that will definitely help you to crack the client interview for system administrator job profile. Thank you so much guys. We are going to connect next and discuss more about the questions related to system administrators.